our planet, Earth, is a place of far horizons. Four-fifths of its surface is water, separating its massive continents and its myriad islands. Since time immemorial, the far horizons of the seven seas have stirred the imagination of man. A thousand years ago, a Norseman gazed westward across the ocean and planned a daring voyage. Thus, Leif Erikson and his hardy Vikings became the first Europeans of record to conquer the mighty North Atlantic. The saga of the Vikings was five centuries old before Christopher Columbus, convinced that the earth was round, sailed westward in search of India. Again, the new world was discovered and the voyages of Columbus gave birth to a century of feverish exploration. Amerigo Vespucci, who gave his name to America, Sir Francis Drake, Sir Walter Raleigh, and countless others followed man's dream of riches and conquest across the horizon of the North Atlantic. The early 17th century saw the crossing of the Jamestown settlers to Virginia and the pilgrims to New England. Much of the eastern shore of America was soon mapped and colonized, and the North Atlantic became a fast-growing route of trade, linking the old world and the new. In the golden age of sail, clipper ships made amazing transatlantic records for speed, but sailings were irregular and uncertain. Passengers had little service and less comfort. The dawn of the age of steam found men still dreaming of new conquests in ocean travel. One of these far-seeing practical pioneers was Samuel Cunard of Halifax, Nova Scotia. Cunard envisioned ships with steam engines as well as sails, ships that could carry passengers on schedule regardless of wind or weather. And Cunard's dream came true when on the 4th of July in the year 1840, the first Cunarder, the Britannia, sailed on her maiden voyage from Liverpool to Halifax, Boston. The wonder of her day, the Britannia established a service and founded a tradition that has grown for more than a hundred years. From that day to this, the distinctive red and gold flag, which symbolizes the house of Cunard, known from the most famous transatlantic liners of each succeeding generation. Today, the Cunard passenger fleet includes such distinguished ships as the present-day Mauritania, which carries on both the name and the tradition of the world-famous old Mauritania, known and loved, and the modern Britannic, one of the largest motor ships, one of the most popular cruise ships alone. Those who like the... The Corinthia, shown here, and the Sylvania, the luxurious new Corona site, not only on the North Atlantic, from the midnight sun North Cape to the lush tropic shores of South Sea Islands. Leading this famous Cunard fleet are the world's largest ships. Beautiful Queen Mary is known and loved by perhaps more travelers than any other ship in history. One of the fastest liners ever launched, the Queen Mary is matched in popularity and surpassed in size only by her sister ship, the mighty Queen Elizabeth, the largest ocean liner ever built. These great queens are veritable cities afloat, luxurious pleasure resorts of the seaways, yet so swift in their passage that they maintain with ease a weekly schedule both east and west across the Atlantic surely a feat which Samuel Cunard himself could never have believed possible. While the Queens call regularly at Cherbourg in Southampton, other ships of the fleet serve the ports of Liverpool, Cove, and Havre. Cunard's unique range of ships from the world's largest to those of more modest size and speed, enable your local travel agent to offer you the widest possible choice of accommodations. At no extra cost for his experience and service, your travel agent can help you plan your transatlantic voyage 
to any part of Europe or the world. Your travel agent can help you choose from the economical comfort of tourist class or cabin class rooms to the unsurpassed luxury of first class. Just what you want to suit your own taste and budget. And Cunard sailings are so frequent that they'll fit your vacation or business plans for any season of the year. For every Cunard sailing date, travelers from all over America converge on the ports of Montreal, Quebec, or Halifax in Canada, or on the city of New York, skyscraper metropolis of America and busiest seaport in the Western Hemisphere, where it's not unusual to find two or even three great Cunarders alongside their peers on a single day. So let's join the eager throng and experience for ourselves a modern North Atlantic crossing. Our ship is the Queen Elizabeth, and what a ship she is, with a graceful prow towering high above the cars and taxis far below. The Cunard Piers are in the very heart of New York, a few short blocks from Times Square, Central Park, and all the famous hotels, theaters, shops, and restaurants of Midtown Manhattan. Travelers are often amazed at the speed and ease with which more than 2,000 passengers are embarked, while at the same time, hundreds of visitors are also welcomed on the ship and pier. Crossing the gangway, we step from the bustle of city streets into the quiet luxury of a great floating hotel. No two first-class rooms are alike. Each is an individual masterpiece of the decorator's art, truly a luxurious setting for a happy journey. To many first-time ocean travelers, the elegance of their seagoing home is a surprise indeed. This delighted lady hadn't even imagined that those little spaces she saw on the deck plan in the travel agent's office would really be so big and luxurious, so perfectly appointed in every tiny detail. The smiling stewardess and steward who welcome you take pride in their age-old tradition of perfect service. To them, this is your home, and your slightest wish will be theirs to fulfill. But now, we must go on deck. Our friends will want to see us off, and time seems to take wings as the moment of sailing draws near. News photographers and newsreel cameramen are on hand, as usual, to make their last-minute shots of celebrities on the passenger list. The docking bridge is manned. Eager thousands on ship and shore search for their friends to wave farewell. From stem to stern, the enormous ship is a beehive of activity. New travelers are often astonished to see a giant ocean liner sail on schedule with the precision of an express train. With the last gangway down and the final moorings thrown off, the Queen Elizabeth is ready to sail. A signal from the bridge goes by telegraph to the distant engine room. voice, the queen stirs into life. Everybody seems to be on deck, waving to friends who have come to see them off. For sailing is a thrill. One of the many things about ocean travel that make folks say, getting there is half the fun. as her mighty engines ease her into the river, the passing of the huge hull seems endless, for the queen must move a fifth of a mile to pass a single point.
As the giant liner clears the pier, her passengers feel the thrill of being really underway. While those ashore strive for a last envious glimpse of their lucky friends aboard. Slow ahead as the ship moves down the Hudson River. A majestic sight indeed, for the Queen Elizabeth is five city blocks long, and her graceful hull and superstructure tower high above the water. Now we'll have time to catch our breath and learn to find our way around in this floating city which will be our home for the next four days. It takes a little time to get acquainted, but it won't be hard, for there are clear direction signs on every hand to point the way. Handy deck plans show exactly where you are and make it easy for you to find your way about. 35 elevators serve the ship's 14 decks. One of the first things you may want to do is to visit the Purses Bureau, for this is the ship's business office where all the questions and details concerning your voyage may be handled. By radio or ship-to-shore telephone, you can keep in touch with any corner of the world. A Cunard passenger list is a veritable who's who of travel. You're sure to see names you know, perhaps someone from your own hometown. And you'll be delighted to discover the many unexpected personal services which make your travel easy and comfortable. For example, your favorite barber back home will find an able replacement here. While for the ladies, a perfectly equipped salon provides beauty service of every sort. Even while you're asleep at night, the service which makes your voyage pleasant goes on. The shoes you leave outside your door are meticulously shined and back in place again before morning. As you awake to your first full day at sea, you begin to appreciate the luxurious travel comforts that only an ocean liner can provide. And you find that deep slumber and salt sea air have put a keen edge on your appetite. While you breakfast, the Ocean Times, printed during the hours of the night, brings you all the news of the world which suddenly seems far away indeed. Yet with a telephone at your bedside, you can speak to any corner of the world, summon any service that you wish, or chat with your friends aboard. Later, on the Queen's broad decks, caressed by sunshine and salty winds, promenading becomes an exhilarating experience. And for perfect, carefree relaxation, what can compare to basking in a comfortable deck chair? The Queen Elizabeth has more than three acres of deck space for recreation. Here in cabin class, fresh air enthusiasts can relax in comfort and enjoy the moving panorama of the ocean and the sky. Here too, on the wide tourist class deck, there's plenty of room to take it easy in the sunshine. Part of the fun of being at sea is just doing nothing at all and making a record of those leisure hours to show the folks back home. Snapshots of newfound friends and new surroundings you'll never want to forget. Before you know it, it's time for lunch. Perhaps you'll choose the lovely veranda grill. High up on deck with window views of the sea, not only a favorite place for lunch, but later in the day, a gay spot for dinner, supper, and dancing. There's so much to see and do aboard a queen that one trip just isn't time enough. Perhaps you'd like to go shopping. You can buy exquisite china figurines or handbags in your choice of finest leathers and modern fittings. There are English woolens, Scotch tweeds, 
and cashmere sweaters, and many other items of clothing and accessories for which Britain is known the world over. How about a few hours with a good book? The classics, travel, mystery. There is a well-stocked library in each of the ship's three classes with an experienced librarian in charge. Or in one of the many writing rooms, you can share your experiences by letter with your family and friends. You may like a quiet bit of competition with your fellow voyagers. Or if you enjoy more energetic play, the spacious decks provide for every kind of open-air fun. The big cabin-class sports deck is one of the finest on the ship. And the tourist-class sports deck, sheltered high amidships between the Queen's great funnels, offers plenty of room for healthful recreation. Of the many ocean-going games, quoits is one of the favorites. And of course, Shuffleboard is the most popular of all. If you have even more energy to expend, and sea air gives you plenty, you'll want to take a workout in the gymnasium, equipped for every type of exercise and supervised by a trained physical instructor. During part of the day, there are private sessions for ladies others for gentlemen, still others for the entire family. And after a workout like this, what could be more fun than a saltwater plunge in one of the big swimming pools? This cabin class pool on the Queen Elizabeth is one of the most beautiful on any ship and a popular gathering place, especially for the younger generation. Nearby are complete facilities for Turkish baths, medicinal baths, and massage, all served by experienced attendants, who here, as everywhere on the ship, are carefully trained for their particular service. A refreshing plunge like this puts you right in the mood for another age-old tradition of the sea, afternoon tea, served on the broad enclosed promenade deck with a bountiful assortment of the pastry chef's famous confections to tempt your appetite. Perhaps you'd prefer to have your tea in the beautiful main lounge with pleasant music as a background. One of 35 public rooms conveniently placed throughout the ship the main lounge displays a magnificent portrait of the Queen Mother who launched this mighty ship and christened it with her own name, Elizabeth. The decoration of the main lounge includes many examples of exquisite inlaid marquetry panels, also used in many other parts of the ship. Adorning the great stairway between the promenade and the main deck squares is the largest marquetry panel in the world. Depicting the pilgrimage in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, this unique work of art is an inlay of many rare woods in their natural colors. More than 50 varieties from many parts of the world were used in the decoration of the ship. Two shipboard motion picture theaters present selected feature films, often before they've had their premiere showing on land. Located aft on the promenade deck, this beautiful modern theater for first and cabin class passengers seats more than 300 people in luxurious comfort. Forward on the promenade deck is another favorite gathering place, the observation bar. Truly international in atmosphere, its expert bartenders can provide any refreshment you like. From the glens of Scotland and the vineyards of France, to exotic mixed drinks from the plantations of the Indies. Here's a rendezvous where you meet your friends in a sparkling atmosphere of companionship and relaxation. 
But all the gay gathering places on the Queen Elizabeth are not for grown-ups only. There are other spots strictly for youngsters and what fun they have. One of them is this cabin class nursery where mothers may leave their offspring with a nursery attendant especially trained in the care of children. Boys like the miniature captain's bridge where they can play at running the ship to their heart's content. And on every voyage, all the youngsters have the time of their lives at the children's party with goodies to eat, souvenirs, and brilliantly colored balloons to play with. It's a big event for the children, and as you can see, a thoroughly busy time for the capable stewards and nursery attendants in charge. Fortunately, there's a quiet retiring place in the smoking room for Dad, where he and his companions can relax and enjoy their favorite refreshments, liquid or otherwise. Here in the smoking room, there is a unique mural map a panorama of the North Atlantic, which illustrates the route of the two great queens from Ambrose Lightship to Bishop's Rock. Tiny electrically driven models move across the map to show the positions of the two queens at every hour, day and night. And look, at this moment, they're almost together. Perhaps on deck, we might be lucky enough to witness the rare event of the two great ships passing within sight of each other in open sea. Yes, there she is. A few moments ago, a mere speck on the horizon. The Queen Mary speeds toward us, white foam curving from her prow. In another moment, these gigantic ships, two of the world's fastest, are passing each other at the combined speed of almost 70 miles an hour. The handling of 200,000 surging horsepower demands the utmost in training and experience. On this 83,000 ton vessel, the rudder alone weighs more than the Mayflower, which brought the Pilgrim Fathers across the sea to America. With all the miraculous instruments of modern navigation, including radar and electronic sounding devices, it still takes men men raised in the finest tradition of the sea to guide the Queen Elizabeth, largest moving structure in the world across the far horizons of the North Atlantic. It still takes keen eyes high aloft in the crow's nest, just as it did in the days of sail, eyes that watch the sea ahead and scan the mighty ship herself, always alert for the safety of her passengers. well on the port side and all is well to starboard. Passengers stroll the decks secure in the knowledge that this gigantic ship is in good hands. The bright hours of the day fly swiftly until the last rays of sunset tint the sky to usher in the glamour of the night. Following another old custom of the sea, most passengers, especially the ladies, look forward to a change of dress for dinner. If perfect dining is one of your special joys, dining aboard a queen will be a happy memory indeed. As you enter the main restaurant, the buffet will give you an inkling of what awaits you, a taste-tingling sight when the appetite is sharpened by a day at sea. Cunard chefs are masters of the art of appealing to the eye as well as to the appetite. Here you'll find delectable foods, the special favorites of every... from America, from Britain, France, Italy, Germany. In fact, from every corner of Europe and the Orient. Few restaurants in the whole world, at sea or ashore, can surpass the Queen Elizabeth's main dining salon, either in size or elegance. Here, in leisure and luxury, 780 passengers may be served at the same time. 
A moment of pleasant indecision awaits you as the hors d'oeuvre table is brought. For here must be every tantalizing titbit that ever tempted a traveler's taste. For your fish course, the seven seas provide a choice. Through these kitchen doors come delicacies fit for a king, part of the 10,000 meals served on the queen every day at sea. Your selection is almost endless. Perhaps a tender sirloin or a filet mignon. A crown roast of lamb, as decorative as it is delicious. Or maybe you'd like a visit from the beef carver, who serves his roast from a silver wagon on wheels. Or perhaps for your meat course tonight, you'll choose game, grouse or pheasant. Birds prepared as only master chefs can prepare them and served as only an artist can carve them. But appetizing as all these dishes are to the eye, it's the taste that tells. Mmm. Mmm. For dessert, there are the pastry chef's famous creations. There are fruits and delicacies from around the world, or flaming crepe Suzette prepared at your table. And for those who relish superb wines, the cellar is stocked with the finest vintages from everywhere. Fragrant sherries, robust ports, full-bodied burgundies, rich sauternes, a connoisseur's choice for every course. After dinner, the varied program of evening fun gets underway. If you feel lucky, maybe you'd like to play the horses. And your bet is as good as the next fellow's, for the speed of these horses depends on neither breeding nor training, but on a charming lady and the cast of the dice. Double, four, double, five, and six. Get the idea? Each time a horse's number comes up, he Two, moves ahead. But three, it takes a double or better to five, jump a hurdle. And the double, double, six. One, two, and triple. Come on, triple, triple, six. One, two, five, and the double, double. Come on, can't hear it. Double! Three. Number three is the winner. And there goes a happy young lady to cash in her tickets. And now, let's strike up the band. Everybody likes to dance. In this sparkling atmosphere, no one can be a wallflower. This is the Get Acquainted Dance, enlivened by a gay and colorful shower of balloons and a jolly contest to add to the hilarity. The prize will go to the dancing partners who keep the balloons in place between their foreheads longest. No hands allowed, and if the balloon falls, you're out of the contest. Uh-oh, too bad. Thus, all too swiftly, it seems, the hours on the Queen slip by. Evenings filled with gaiety and good companionship. Days of invigorating sport in the brisk salt air, or lazy relaxation on the spacious decks. Yes, all too soon, the lookout cries, Land Ho! And the blue horizon melts into the rolling hills of France. Almost before you know it, the docks of Cherbourg are beside you. Moments later, your floating home is safely moored in the gangways or man. Now, all the amazing machinery that services the ship goes into action. Even before the passengers themselves are disembarked, their cars are swiftly brought up from deep down in the hold and swung ashore to be ready for the road to Paris or Italy or the Riviera. 
travelers enthuse over this beautiful terminal at Cherbourg, one of the world's newest and finest, with every convenience to make embarkation or landing easy and pleasant. Already waiting are the boat trains, and with simple customs and passport formalities completed, our friends will soon be off to Gay Paris. But even while the boat trains are on their way to Paris, the Queen Elizabeth herself is underway again, crossing the English Channel to the port of Southampton. Soon tugs are nosing alongside and the Southampton Ocean Terminal looms close at hand. This new terminal is one of the few docks in the world big enough to accommodate the 80,000 ton queens. Hundreds of people crowd the visitors gallery to greet arriving friends or returning relatives. There'll be joyful memories and many a wistful moment too as our sparkling holiday at sea comes to an end. Now in the last few moments as we prepare to go ashore, it's hard to have to say goodbye to friends who have shared our shipboard pleasures. In a few moments, our baggage is ashore and we disembark for the last look at the magnificent liner which has given us so much pleasure. And now the boat train, a crack express named the Cunarder, will whisk us off on a non-stop trip to London's Waterloo Station. But whether our own destination is London itself with its bustling thoroughfares and its many historic landmarks, whether our journey may take us to Paris, the quaint winding streets of Montmartre, the resorts of the Riviera, ancient cities of Germany, the castles on the Rhine, the picturesque canals of Venice, the famed antiquities of Rome, or the snow-crowned summits of the Alps, our memories will carry us back again and again, back to those glorious carefree days we spent at sea, blissful moments, gay and sparkling as champagne, the zestful enjoyment of superb food, charming company and smiling service. Yes, all the many pleasant things that mean getting there is half the fun.